other firms, and are they giving you any pushback from this development? Well, yes. The question is, who used to harvest and market the olive oil, and are they giving me pushback in this development? Uh, the, the traditional channels of, of marketing, where, uh, well, of course, the, who harvests the olive is the farmers all the time. But the traditional ways of marketing, there were, uh, I would say, two channels other than the local market. The local market, we, we produce, in a, in a good year, we produce 35,000 tons in Palestine. In a not so good year, we produce 15 to 20 thousand tons, and uh, when last year we had a disastrous harvest, it was very low, about 6 thousand tons, but that's rare. Uh, but Palestine consumes about 12 thousand tons, and the rest is needs needs to be sold somewhere. Uh, we probably sell about 3 thousand tons through uh, personal channels in the Gulf states like Kuwait, Bahrain, Dubai, and so on. And those are not real commercial channels, but rather, I know I have family in, in those countries. I will send them my oil, and they will sell it by the tin, and then uh, send me the money. Or uh, sold in the local community over the time between two harvests. Or sold, uh, some of maybe less than 500 were tons were sold through NGOs to Solidarity Networks. And the rest was sold through middle traders to, to Israeli uh, uh, traders who would export it to the US or Europe or in the Israeli market. So uh, the short answer is that uh, uh, the, the, both the, the Palestinian traders and the NGOs are not happy with what we've done. I mean, that's just, uh, even though the NGOs, some of them had to follow and become fair trade, and they certified fair trade, but they, like, we spoiled it for them in a way. Uh, so they now have, they have to do things and they have to, and, and they, are not, they don't have as much market. But actually some of the buyers that we're buying from some of these groups have started buying from us because there is more value. And now they are, we're pushed, and that's a great dynamic, a lot of these NGOs to actually work fair trade. And some of them got fair trade certification and became certified, uh, but now they have to do more work in order to, to do the trade. Uh, Israeli uh, marketing now has turned into Jordan. The market price does not allow Israeli uh, traders or the, the level of the, the money that they want to pay is uh, uh, the, the, the market in, in, uh, in the West Bank will prevent them from buying. So they are buying from Jordan. But really this year is going to be a challenge for us. We'll see what's going to happen. Uh, right now uh, we're maintaining a good price. And we're buying this year about 500 tons uh, and uh, maintain a good price, but certainly we don't buy Palestine olive oil. We, we buy from the farmers that we work with, but we impact the local market. And we will see what's going to happen with the surplus, because I don't think the Israeli buyers are going to buy from, uh, from Palestine. They're still going to they have now uh, shifted to Jordan. So this is going to be a challenging year to see what's going to happen. Right now, the, the, the price is holding up. Uh, we're, we're, we're searching for new channels, but we'll see how the the the, 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 the market will hold. Uh, just to so you know, right now we uh, the project is exporting at a level of about five hundred five million dollars a year. So we've really grown uh, rapid, very fast uh, in, in, in this in this enterprise. How do you? Uh Ship your olive oil out. Do you have to ship it through uh, Tel Aviv on air freight or through Haifa? No, through Haifa uh, by sea. Yes. And do the Israelis charge you some kind of? No, they. I mean, they. What they charge us or or the extra? We pay about a thousand dollar extra uh, for us being Palestinians because we have to hire a semi from Palestine, a semi from Israel to meet at a checkpoint to exchange the load. So that's an extra track that we pay for. So you can't drive your no. oil out of uh, out of, No. You have to leave it at, at a checkpoint. We swap it at a checkpoint to an Israel, with an Israeli truck truck driver that takes it to the port. And we cannot stuff our container in Palestine and pass it through the checkpoint, even though they have laser uh, 
scanners uh, paid for by the U.S. in order to allow for for our uh, our export and our trade, but they wouldn't allow us to do it. Uh, and then we have we hire an Israeli company at the port to stuff the the, the container. So we pay for a security check fee for that, and we pay for uh, a third party to stuff the container, and we pay for an extra truck. Together between eight hundred to a thousand dollar every load. Yes. Um, so when you press the olives, I would imagine there's some leftover product like some yes, husk, husk, some mucilage or something like that. Can that be sold as feed for uh, an organic situation or use it as it's more suitable for composting in the pits? Can you use them for uh, bedding for like you do with uh, almonds? You can use all those byproducts for other things. Yeah, we, mainly right now we use them for uh, heat source. A lot of the farmers use them for to warm their houses with them. In our facility, we our we have a boiler that, that runs on the husk, mm -hmm. and uh, I think potentially they have even better use. I mean, they, if you know these pellets that uh, there are uh, heaters that run on pellets, yeah. we can actually get a, a, a separator that separate the olive meat from the pits themselves, the, and then the pits can be a good pellets for the heaters and and the olive can be fed to the sheep and goods. So we're planning on doing that as well because we have a lot of husk and but it's mainly used as hay, uh, as heat source because uh, both the bread baking, the traditional uh, taboon bread uh, runs on, 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 on the husk and uh, and they just uh, light them and uh, put them in their houses and uh, they actually burn for a long time because they still have some oil in the bread. Um, Yes. So, if your harvest last year was really low, mm -hmm. are you going to be able to meet your commitments of olive oil shipments and orders? It, it was an odd year, and actually, we did ask our our suppliers to, which is very rare for a company to do. Uh, we asked our buyers to to shrink down their order as much as they can. <laughs> <laughs> Last year. <laughs> So we can supply them. But yes, we were able to supply about 150 tons last year. This year we are uh, exporting 500 tons. Yeah, it was a bad year. Yeah. It wasn't a very off, off year. What happened is it's, it's really related to climate change. Uh, we had very late rain. Uh, the early in the, in the year we didn't get uh, rain. And then that the late rain then produced the very late blossom, and then the blossom came during uh, hot and windy season, which we lost most of the blossom, so we ended up with, with no olives in the fall. Yes. You mentioned the differentiation between different standards of different grades, <coughs> one the extra virgin and the uh, virgin, and I suppose there are other types as well. And you also mentioned the biodiesel projects, um, and in fair trade. One of your principles, I know, is that you uh, buy the entire harvest of the farmer so they won't be stuck the surplus. Right. So is it possible that with the differentiation and with the biodiesel project, um, you might actually be able to, 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 to purchase huge quantities, even not organically grown, and, and, uh, and, 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 uh, and that way keep the price even higher for all the farmers? Or to offer it for as biodiesel? Yes. It's, See, uh, because you won't have a surplus, it will lower the price. Yeah, but that would be a lot more expensive than diesel. Uh -huh. And that would be obviously difficult for, for the farmers to afford. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it has a lot more value than diesel, the oil. It's, uh, it's one yeah. of the high, high price commodities. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, but, but, I mean, we're, we're, I mean and we're, we're more invested in bringing the value high. Yeah. We want, we're trying to bring the value of the olive oil, we're now in a movement called Beyond Extra Virgin yeah. in Italy. Mm -hmm. And we actually hired, <laughs> <laughs> we hired an, a French expert from uh, the Italy. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, uh, we, we hired an, an expert from France, his, his name is Jean-Marie, and he's in the International Olive Oil Council. He's a wonderful fellow, he spent 
a week in October with us, a week in November, and I'm going back next week, and he will be with us in February for another week. Developing our capacities to technical and taste-wise. We, we have uh, started with 15 of our employees, and tasting and connoisseurship is, is not just knowledge, it's sometimes talent. So we started with 15, we have a tasting team, we are narrowing it down to five now. And uh, he's working with this team, and both working at the farm and in the farming practices, the handling into our storage and into the processing to produce really high quality olive oil that can be sold at premium shops with, with an added value. I think that's how we want to bring an increased income to the farmers. But this year we were able to pay uh, two shekels extra, that's a little more than half a dollar, uh, dollar and uh, 15 cents uh, extra for those who produced uh, premium quality beyond extra virgin olive oil and we want to push that more in our uh, farming community. We have market for it. I mean, yes, it's a niche market, but Palestine is a small country. Mm -hmm. And each market in the US and, and, and in Europe is can, can take all of our products. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is the approach we are doing. And we are also going at it, increasing the value output from a quantity perspective. How we can bring the olive tree, I think we think that uh, the olive tree is only about 20, 20 to 25 percent utilized right now. We can multiply it double and trifold in the future. And we are engaging in these kinds of programs to increase the, the value from the crop and the value of the crop. Yes? Uh, have you had any, has Kanan had any uh, publicity lately or anything? Oh, yeah, thank you for bringing me to here. <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow, Big Up Business Week. We've had so much publicity so far. We've been in the Washington uh, Post, uh, we've been in the Guardian, uh, we've been in, uh, in many, an organic monitor, uh, ethical consumer magazine. Uh, uh, we had so many mentions uh, uh, in, in, in newspapers and websites. But tomorrow we have a full article on Canaan Fair Trade in Business Week. And Business Week is uh, <laughs> So pick up the magazine, you will, you will find an article on us. In those areas that uh, Israel will not allow the picking to take place, what happens over the years with those trades? In fact, they're not published by now. Yeah, picking the olives. Well, I mean, they, they, I mean, they, of course, the, the whole value of the of the orchard as an orchard degenerate. The farmers, any chance they they get to to go there, they will go and offer whatever service they can do. But certainly, a regular service does not maintain the, the trees, so they become that the whole mountain become very wild uh, setting, and those trees start failing in, in their capacity. To uh, in some of the challenge, the access area for us is, is difficult because we cannot certify them organic, because the farmers cannot have regular access to them. And when they do, uh, one of the m things that the farmers fear the most is weed and weed control, because weed become fire hazard in the summer. So when they do, they go use herbicides because they don't have enough time to actually uh, do the weed control and mulch and, and what they're supposed to do. So that takes the advantage of organic farming out. So yeah, these, these areas become uh, challenging to maintain, but nevertheless, wherever we can, we, we help them to maintain that human connection. Again, thank you very much, all of you. Thank you.